Well, here we are. We are at the West Palm Beach Antiques Fair. This is the huge extravaganza. There are a whole bunch of dealers who only do one show a year here, and they come to this one. There goes a box full of Pyrex in front of us. Some of the folks aren't even open yet, so we're going to walk around the edge of their booths. But I see a couple of things I really like here. This little guy is a Gilner elf from about 1950, another popular California elf maker at that time. This is a very unusual vessel in the middle here. It looks like something that was done by a home crafter, but it's really quite clever with all the handles and the teapot. Obviously, they got that one at the thrift store. They really had to take that tag off. That's a McCoy piece. And then this is a different kind of sailfish. It's not Hager. It actually is very new. And I want to show you this because look at the big, huge open vent holes. Nowhere. There's the China sticker, which they haven't taken off all the way. So don't be fooled by this piece if you see it in the wild. It is not old. The bank with the pirate is a classic that we sell here pretty well in Florida. It's missing its trap, but that still should be $25 at least. Very delicate painting on this piece with the Venetian gondoliers. That lace work is just really incredible to me. This looks like a 1960s cordial set. I know collectors who like metal buildings, and some of them will collect the banks as well. Almost every bank had one of these made by one of these made by the Banthrico Company in Chicago back between the 60s and the 80s. Cambridge Decagon pattern from the 30s. This one will glow under a black light for sure. It's got that neat keyhole handle. I find the center handle trays a little hard to sell though because you have to have a space on a table for them otherwise you really can't stack them to store. Groovy bejeweled lamps from the 60s are definitely a thing that is going into homes again. And it's been repainted, but I like this nesting table set because they're triangular rather than the typical squares or circles we see. I think they actually have more outdoor dealers than they've had in the past few years. Very large, giant-sized mixing bowls here. A lot of companies did the pink and blue stripes. McCoy is well known for it, but this one is Watt Pottery, made between the 1930s and the 1960s. $120 for this mantel clock from about 1890. They're so handsome. They are wood. The marble is faux painted. They have the lion heads on the side. This was absolutely the typical clock of its era, although this one's a little bit fancier. $1 on the Christmas plate. The Christmas plates made between 1964 and about 1994 are very, very common. After that or before that, you still have a collector. But in those years, all the companies were making Christmas plates. Everybody was buying them, and everyone still has them. I have always liked Harker Cameo wear. Flowers were one of the things they did, but they basically did a textured relief so the glaze did not adhere, and then you just go through to the base, and that's where you get the Cameo. $10 on the cute Harker Cameo dish with the bunnies, and it says glazed inside which it is. And the point of that was to make sure that you knew that even though they hadn't done the double glaze, that it wasn't going to leak. They did a lot of the juvenile wear in Cameo. Here's the little circus trainer and his elephant. Next to it, we have a bunch of Victorian era blue and white transfer wear. This one's priced at 59 and this is earlier. This is probably 1840s or 50s, judging by the shape and buff color body. I like this rattan dining set. It's been reupholstered, but we're definitely seeing more interest in rattan, partly because of younger people getting into Golden Girls era style wicker, but also because it's something that was widespread in the 60s and 70s, and it's something that you can actually buy affordably. And it's light and it's easy to move and clean under. So it's popular with younger and older customers, both people downsizing and people starting your new homes. Rotelli Toso, this interestingly shaped Murano glass bowl. And then this is something I really like. This is consolidated glass. Well, they show it as Phoenix, but I think it's consolidated because it has the wash and then the clear. Phoenix usually is more opaque. 
but this is yeah they show phoenix and consolidated because both of them had it this is line 700 as they called it at the time 65 dollars is not a bad price if it was any of the more colorful washes it would actually be a real bargain at that price philip hoffman vase for Mosher from the 1950s and 60s the chairs are in the style of Werner Panton. They're a little bit different at the base. A lot of other companies made similar pieces because the Werner Panton chairs were so biomorphic and so comfortable. Seems to be our morning for Harkerware. This is another Harkerware piece from the 40s, and this one is painted and stamped for Sunken Gardens, Florida, which is a very sweet, still existing old Florida roadside attraction in St. Petersburg. It was built around a sinkhole in the 1930s, and it's still there as a park that you can tour with exotic birds and foliage that's been growing for 90 years. It's really neat. This one does say for decorative use only hand painted because they didn't want you to scrape the paint off it. I see some people starting to show silver plate again and this silver plate piece is a really nice 1920s centerpiece with the flower frog. So this is actually a flower arranger in here. I'm having a little trouble getting it off but if I could you could see underneath here Hard to do this with one hand sometimes, especially because the knob is missing on this. But there, you have your bowl underneath, and then you arrange your flowers in it. But it was very pretty even if you didn't put flowers in it. EPNS stands for Electroplated Nickel Silver. This is a neat piece of Kurok with the tiger lilies. I haven't seen this before. They only have $16 on it. It's nice to be able to see it out in a strong sunlight too because every scratch and every bit of wear will show and this one doesn't really show a whole lot, so that's good news. What a fun cubic piece of furniture with the holes cut out. You would stack these in various ways. I think this one is a little scuffed, but it would be a great pedestal base to put a, oh, my Stingray sculpture, for example, on. You also see some really cool lucite at these shows because this is the part of Florida where lucite really reigns supreme. And look at that with the spring cut in it. That is really something very different. I like the lamps as well. This is interesting. Someone took my grandmother's old suitcase and painted a Picasso-esque figure on it. It's upside down, but it's Picasso, so it shows pretty much the same either way. Someone's had a lot of fun doing those sorts of designs on things. I see a dress form painted appropriately. Well, I'm uh, from the other side of the state this time of year, and then I travel all over the place. But uh, a lot of this looks like redware out in Europe. Is that right? Uh, yeah, uh, I got French redware, and I got stuff from Spain. And yeah, I guess to be safe, it's European country redware. Right, French and Spanish. It's a really interesting collection. Nice to see bread bowls that are real with actual wear. Look at the bottom of that, a little bit of wormwood. It's obviously been slid back and forth across the table. Very different than this piece here. European primitives do have a little different feel than the ones that we're used to in the States, but they're really neat. He's got some really beautiful patterned rugs as well interesting collection he said this came out of a warehouse and had been stored about 30 years and we did see a lot of this sort of thing being imported to the u.s about that time i see quite a nice shell porcelain sign that looks like a very real one big and heavy in these days boy those are starting at a thousand dollars and up i've had this piece a few times and i think it's very attractive i believe this one is coors even though it's not marked here's a handsome old marble top piece of furniture just all of the curvaceousness to that makes it really interesting this is going to be victorian around 1890 it's sort of a modified empire style really haven't seen one quite like it before and again this is our harker morning this is mother's mug in the cameo wear for ten dollars some really pretty 1930s pottery i like the big oil jars with the bow knots on them i'm sure that's a midwestern company or possibly even falls graph but this booth is not actually open and out of respect to the dealer i'm not going to go pick it up and look at a mark the one on the end here with the two-toning puts me in mind of franciscan ware from the 1930s as does its little mate to the right Look how beautiful all this Cambridge glass with the chrome accessories looks in the sunlight. Of course, the nudes are particularly desirable, as you see in the front here. Usually you see solid stems. This split stem is an unusual piece on the right there. And it's actually priced a little less, but that's because the purple is a more co popular color. 
It's a shame about the damage, but these two tiles are very nice from the late 1800s, $85 a pair. The Raven is Rookwood. You also see this in bookends. It's priced at $345. A couple of nice Victorian pieces. The urn on the right is great because it has its original lid, but I really like the ram's head on this ewer on the left and this interesting handle aesthetic era late victorian probably 1880s approximately it actually has a turn bohemia mark on it i usually think of these things as being austrian but yes turn templates did make some of these pieces as well in front of it is a cute roseville foxglove i just love foxgloves they're one of my favorite flowers you get such a burst those and gladiolas that's a cute little piece in a nice color. This is unusual. This is a Shawnee kitchenware line that was made for a short period of time. And this is the salt box that would have hung on the wall. So you'd have salt for your preparation as you were cooking. And then this piece behind it, $45, is a Weller piece from their last era of production. In these days of dry erase boards and electronic everything, these old, it doesn't seem that old, but they are now starting to be old, press plastic letter signs are definitely collectible. This is a fancy looking pattern from a more modern time that we run into quite a bit in the States. It's Schumann, it's the Chateau Dresner, as it says there. And you can see the mark on the back. This is U.S. zone Germany, so that's 1946 to 49 only. But you see similar pieces made throughout the 1960s and 70s with this pierce work and a lot of hand-painted detail. It's very nice. Wonderful leaded glass window our friend Dave from Michigan brought with him. And this one is priced at $350. He's also got this neat American Oak office file cabinet with the file drawers you pull out at the top. So the files are vertical and then the regular file drawers underneath. He's got a bigger version of it back there with one cabinet on top for books. We used to not see interest in this office furniture, but now that a lot more people have home offices, it's really coming on strong. When you start at the top, you figure, well, this is a cute 1920s walnut piece of furniture. When you get to the legs, you realize this is a pretty incredible piece of 1920s furniture because the back are barley twists, but the front are carved as knights. And you don't really see figural carvings, especially on pieces this small as the legs. So that is really something very different. Inexpensive and fun and common in the 30s was Geisha Girl. You can see the reason for the name of the design. These were done in Japan. Very popular 1930s export up until we cut off relations with them. For the most part, this is very inexpensive still because they did make quite a lot of it. Sometimes it's marked, sometimes it's not. You can tell the shapes are very typical of 1930s, like this lid with this pointed handle in the arch. That one has the Made in Japan mark. It's a fun thing to collect if you like the pattern because you will find it in abundance and the prices are not high. One of my favorite things I ever owned for a brief period of time was a teepee lamp similar to this one. And yes, this is a lamp. You can see the bulb in there. That's pretty neat. I haven't had or seen one of these in a long time. The lighter heads were made in Japan, but the base is Viking glass. And since I am the king of toilet seat covers now, thanks to <laughs> Thrift Battle a couple of years ago, well, this is the bath mate, and it is embroidered with a butterfly, and it is original from about 1980. And I have to admit, it's tempting. <laughs> I think it's fun. The stains are all just on the packaging. Well, I couldn't shop the outside without buying something, so I bought something very classy and tasteful. And appropriately enough, here are these folks just in time. Oh, interesting with the plow. I wouldn't have known to look for that. That's great. And John Deere stuff's really collectible. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Marty had a cane he brought in today. He has something really unusual. So I'm from the Northwest and we see some Rainier beer items from pre-prohibition because they were around then but this one is in ceramic rather than a metal piece uh, these ceramic trays were popularly made in germany around 1900 to 1910 and i have never seen the rainier piece in ceramic before and they came with four uh, posters that are identical to that but small yes but they were only done it says compliments of the season so this was something that would have been given out around christmas yep and this is about the time in Washington State Prohibition came early, so th these would not have lasted in the line too terribly long. 
I'm just old enough to remember when a few restaurants still have these Seabird coin-op setups where you got three plates for a quarter and one for a dime and then you can actually sit at your table and operate the jukebox. These little sending units sell for several hundred dollars now. This is a company that we don't see so much HB, crochet embroideries and Dorcas mendings. Dorcas from the Bible is the seamstress. That's the reason for the name of those. And this is an oak one sometime around 1890. This booth has some fun things to show that we haven't seen before. These are Blanco lamps, and there's something really important to know about them. Besides the fact that it has the correct finial, and this one's easy because it's got the foil label, but the way I could tell from a distance is this harp is specific to Blanco. These are the original harps. They are made to be adjustable of these two rods. So you can put different side shades on them, depending on how you wanted to use them in your decorating or what space you had for them. If it does not have this harp, then it is not complete. So if you're looking at Blanco lamps, you want to have that feature. This is the Blanco pattern that I talk about that I found in Grand Junction, Colorado. We thought it was so rare although this piece is actually hard to find, but I kept finding the larger vases with the pebbles stuck on, and I was buying every one I could find at $45 each in Grand Junction. And yes, they are worth a bit more than that, but it turned out Grand Junction had a furniture store that got all of the rest in the line when Blanco quit making that line, and they would give it out when you bought furniture. So in Grand Junction, these are not uncommon, but everywhere else they are. That's one of the fun things about getting to travel around the country is you find these variations and you sometimes find veins of certain kind of merchandise that are desired in other places that are all distributed in one place. And that is part of the great fun I have traveling around and bringing this to you. If you're having fun, please hit thumbs up to like this video. Please let your friends know. Sharing person to person is actually how we get more people into this community and have more fun and learn more together. Speaking of lamps, here's a beautiful Van Briggle lamp. The woman with the amphora. Wonderful color. This is a 1940s or 50s era piece. Here's a piece of Fenton we don't see very much. This is the sage mist green color and desert blossom is the pattern. You can see the desert blossom on the bottom. That's an unusual piece. For this pattern is Franciscan Madeira. There's some really interesting completer pieces. The candlesticks are a really interesting pattern and there are also Tiffin made glasses that go with this in a brown color that have a texture to them. This was popular around 1970 and they are asking $20 a plate for the dinner, $14 for the salad, and $11 for the soup bowl, which are standard prices. This is called a Tantalus, and this is an English one, and wow, is it handsome and in good condition. A lot of times, uh, people didn't know how to use the mechanism correctly, and they would mess up stoppers and things, or shot glasses are missing, so to find one so complete is really neat. That's nickel-plated. It's from about 1900 and it's priced at $23.50. Look at the amazing face on this Seder Bacchus face here. These folks get the most amazing stuff. The bronze is referred to as Adore, this particular treatment. It's basically silvered over bronze on the leaves. A Ferdinand Barbadina. And I will take their attribution because they are very knowledgeable about French and European antiques, and I do not have the knowledge that they do. They actually spend all day in their booth. They have amazing things. This is a great piece here. This is a Eskimo doll, essentially, from the Yukon. And this one actually has the papoose on the back, which is unusual. They have that priced at $275. For what it is in the condition it's in, that's actually a very fair price. This is a beautiful piece, and I'll get to massacre some more French for you. It's La Escalier de Cristal by Palais Royal, Paris, circa 1860, when, when the French Second Empire was really at its peak of power and France was the center of design in the world. Beautiful blue color, and look at the unusual variegation in the glass and the gilt fronds mount. So it's just a beautiful piece, and that is priced at $11.50. This is Gorham, and it is not sterling, it is coin silver. Not all Gorham was made in sterling silver back in the early times. Coin silver is generally between 70 
3 and 82 or 3 percent pure. It's just beautiful the way it's done. And this is a really early piece. Look at the handle and the detail. That is just gorgeous. A beautiful trio of bohemian cut to cranberry basis. So they're overlaid case glass, similar to what they do with cameo glass, and then they cut back to make the design in the cranberry, which is the underlayer, and then they gilded it. So it took several processes, several firings. These pieces are middle 1800s, 1750 for the pair of vases, and 550 for the decanter from the same era. Here is a wonderful oil painting of an early collector. This is called The Connoisseur. It's oil on canvas. And this is by an artist I was not familiar with, but they have a very nice tag on it that tells us that this is Piano Checa y Sanz from Spain. In the middle of his life, he moved to Paris, showed at the World's Fair, and then was seen in salons all over Paris after that time. He did a lot of things that were related to collecting at the time because collecting really started in earnest in the late 1800s. He did a piece called The Antiquarian as well. He did one called Expert in Engraving, Expert in Miniatures. So he showed a lot of people interested in collecting items as well as the crafting of such items. And they all have to do with people studying various objects. There are about 10 known in this series. And most of them are exhibited in the Museo Ulpiano Checa in Spain. This one is 16,500. A really early piece of Wedgwood. It's priced at 195. It's a pastille burner. And look at the dolphins holding it up. They're just beautiful. These folks have amazing things though. The entire booth is always really incredible and they absolutely sell because they have different things every time I see them. We've been showing all sorts of elegant and beautiful things, but not everything has to be elegant and beautiful to be collectible. These sprayers, which spray poison for insects, and were very popular in the 1940s and 50s. By the time I was a kid, these were mostly in landfills or laying in old barns and things, and our parents would say, don't play with those. They might have DDT in them, which was a very nasty chemical. Well, by now, most of that's all gone, it's inert, and the sprayers are really cool to look at, and most of them are thrown away, so there are no things with these now. These folks also get just amazingly beautiful things. Is that? Oh, I was muttering to the camera. I was just saying how um, you get such amazingly beautiful things, and I'm looking at this Tiffany yeah. desk set here. This is just great, and a great pattern. It looks like you have a number of different pieces. I always do. I think everything besides, well, I'm gonna have the abalone over here, but everything I've got right now is great for, uh, I don't think I have any pain there. It folds up like a book slide. Yep. That's Wonderful. It is, it slides. Oh, just fantastic. The loads piece with the metal handles, it's, it's such a beautiful color and such a large size that you just almost never see. Uh, we typically see smaller pieces in green tones when we see them. Uh, may I ask how much that one is? And it's next to a couple of Tiffany pinecone pieces as well. Next to it is a Costa vase, similar to the butterfly vase that I have for sale. Oh, thank you. He's been very kind to take it out of the case so we yeah. can really see the beauty and it's $32. just gorgeous. $32.95. That is just a fantastic yeah. piece. I've never seen one as nice, honestly. Yeah, quite rare. And I've seen quite a bit of loads, but yep. that with the... Uh, yeah. Now, obviously the handles in the metal form were made to the piece, but did they do that themselves or did they send it out to have that done? Uh, they did it themselves. Really? Yeah, they had the, um, yep. They had metal workers yeah. who could do that. Yep. That's fantastic. Oh, well, thank you very much for showing mm -hmm. us that. It is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. This gal is really, really pretty. Reduceoids will make you slender and shapely, and this is chalkware, and it even has the product in it. This is going to be from sometime in the mid to late 1930s, I would estimate. She's priced at $17.50. Yeah, that is fantastic. I have not seen her before. Very cute, and I love the legs. <laughs> Look at these fun German deco figures from the 1920s and 30s. The one on the left is a little powder box, and the one on the right is a perfume lamp. You would actually put scents and the heat from the light bulb would cause the scent to diffuse around the room. This is a Victorian tear catcher. Look at the wonderful glass in that. Lithographed label on there. 
that is just really something special. Tartanware was a collectible from Scotland, and you see cigarette cases like these, card cases, sewing implements, all done with that plant background. These are a little more unusual because they have figures laid in there as well. Well, my friend Brett was the one who gave us a very nice tutorial a couple of years ago on this wonderful costume jewelry, which is now being prized by people in Asia as well as in Europe and North America. So if you're looking for this, a good time to find it because it's starting to be very competitive for these pieces. That's a wonderful big Bond Dome piece with the color there. Everything in this tree is Boucher. That's a good name. I'm looking for a few names we haven't shown you before. This is Reha with the pink and the rhinestones down the middle. That's a fun piece. I really like the gesture pin. Things with faces, even the 1980s cheap face pins are starting to be collectible again. This is an outfit named Verandas and the Lido piece here. This is Los Castillo from Mexico. Los Castillo items are very collectible in the market now. They're tableware, they're bimetal pieces as well as the jewelry. And this is E Castillo here. Wonderful work. A lot of the Mexican jewelry is really very popular now. Here's a number of pieces by Mazer. That's another good name to look for. And then Coro did everything from very simple thermoset plastic jewelry in the 60s and some rather basic pieces to really elegant enamel pieces. The duet pins, they did a lot. And there's a duet pin in the middle there where it comes apart and can be made into dress clips. Speaking of dress clips, there's the horses. I sold that pair last year. So they really made a lot of beautiful things. This is a jelly belly. It's where it's loose-eyed in the center. And anything jelly belly is very collectible as well. We are about as far from Washington State as we could be. And here are a Seattle World's Fair and a Washington souvenir pillow cover from 1962. Any Air Force aviators helmets, particularly the leather ones from the Second World War, are very collectible. They've done a little information for us here, and it is an A-11 Army Air Force because the Army Air Force was what the Air Force was up until 1947 when it became its own separate branch. And they tell us a little more information here. It's the Hap Arnold model named after the Commanding General of the Army Air Corps. Oh, where it, the head turns. Oh, crazy. When we bought it, we didn't know the head turn. How interesting. I just thought it was a fabulous little piece, and then oh, I see the really head That's really cool. Turns. And what are, uh, who made that one? Um, it's made by, it's called the Trudy doll. Oh, interesting. I, but it is American made. I have Trudy never doll. seen this doll before, and I've actually seen a lot of dolls before. Yeah, that yeah, was really neither, fun. But this is fun with the, with the yeah. three heads. Cool. How can you go wrong? If you're happy, smile. If you're yeah. not, cry. <laughs> Let me put it on the crying side. I made him change it back. <laughs> Her name is Anne Marie, Marie Davidson. Davidson. Yes. So she did a lot of generic designs, but this she did also did animals and things. But right. at first, she did more abstraction. Right. And this is an older piece, and right. they are really neat. And her abstracts really do well. Yeah, they and do much better. The price points between the other ones, as opposed to the ones that are just an animal or right. something. Uh, yeah, the the modern, the early modernist stuff. Yeah, she had an interesting background. She worked with a bunch of other. Uh, people in California uh, who were doing enamel art and then branched out on her own and uh, did really great stuff. Does it have the signature on the back? Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, you can tell Anna Marie Davidson because sometimes these labels are gone, but you'll always see this, the yeah. A and the D. <laughs> yeah. We were looking at Wedgwood earlier and here's a color you don't see very much. This is the lavender. And I think it's very graceful with the two maidens and a nice shape as well. I like that piece. Hmm. We'll have to ask about that. They have several things that are very cute here. This is part of Hull's ebb tide pattern with the mermaid from the 1950s. I like this decanter. It has a modernist feel. And it is Italian because it's got that plastic stopper. But a great design, a great look. This is from one of the Empoli makers and they have that priced at $40. This looks like a 1960s or 70s piece. I'm thinking also check. It doesn't have anything to tell us for certain. But look at that wonderful face. Is the wood table yours? That seems like such a wonderful price, $75. These have really been hot again. 
and look at the uh, wood base. And it's nice because this one has a good heavy lacquer that you could use it, but it's not the really shiny lacquer, which is not as appealing to people. So that seems like a wonderful deal on that. And look how cute the Scotty bookends are here. Cast iron, very heavy. Actually, no, these are bronze. Yep, you can see the brass through them. BV, I need to figure out who that company is because I see that marked time to time. They're a little different than Jennings Brothers, but wow, the weight of these is really impressive. So I'm gonna have to ask a price on that too. And then there's this nice Russian painted box. There's our town names. Sometimes they have a maker's name as well. This one is Collect, that's the town name. Only $16 on that. Her prices are very good. A wind speed gauge. Unfortunately, we're gonna need this today. There's a storm blowing in and that's the reason the outdoor dealers had to pack early. These are likely to be made in India or somewhere in Central South Asia. Very pretty decorative plaques. I love the studying. I think these are a little underappreciated. Look at all the filigree. I mean, the work that went into making these, and they're only $15 each. I think I'm going to be spending some money in this space. This is a Tibetan necklace here. And I just think these are fun. It's a lot of look. It's got a sort of primitive quality. They jingle when you walk, and they only want $15 on this. So I think I'm going to take some jewels with me today. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.